when we're drawing ray diagrams for our mirrors, our curved mirrors, uh, and for lenses too when it comes to that, um, it's more convenient for us to draw them on a sort of an axis where we have the, uh, the mirror just drawn small here but we use this entire uh, vertical plane as the surface of the mirror. Now I know that the mirror is curved but this makes it a wee bit more convenient for us. So this is our convex mirror um, and you sometimes see the convex mirror with a shaded side to show the non-reflective side as we've seen before. Um, you, you sometimes don't see it not very clearly in these diagrams. Um, the axes have names but it's not that essential so I'm just going to talk in general terms here. So uh, first of all it's useful to have an object. Here is our object represented by an arrow. So we have uh, an arrow for an object, we're going to aim for an arrow for our image and we're going to take two light rays that come out from the tip of the object and we're going to see where they reflect um, and use the reflected rays to find where the image is. So one of the rays you can always do is a parallel light ray that is parallel to the axes down here. Draw the arrow on it. I've drawn this, this parallel just to show you. You only need one arrow on it. You don't even need to draw these ones, but that's just there. So let's draw that a little bit clearer. Colour it in. You don't have to colour it in. Anyway, parallel light ray. Parallel light ray is going to reflect as though it comes from the focal point. So we don't know where the focal point is, so I'm going to arbitrarily um, make up this as the focal point. And that means we're going to reflect our ray this way. Okay. <clears throat> There's a number of other different rays we can draw, but I'm just going to give you one more and keep it simple at this point. Um, at the very centre, at this point on our, our convex mirror, we're going to have um, reflection as though it's a plane mirror with an equal angle reflection. So we're going to have a ray coming straight in, I haven't drawn it too well, but and a ray that is going to be an equal distance below uh, the object on reflection. Okay, and my drawings aren't that great. But anyway, make sure your arrows are on them. And that ray appears to come from back here somewhere. So this is this is the point where we're going to draw our image, where those imaginary light rays appear to come from. So I for image, the imaginary light rays. Now, what people get confused with, and I'm going to warn you about, is these imaginary light rays, these virtual light rays, um, people struggle about where they should put them. So the rule is, okay, really important rule, is virtual rays, they come from where the light rays would appear to go back to. Okay, um, what's a better way of putting that? <laughs> I don't know. If you're aware of it, you'll you'll take note um, anyway. But so virtual light rays, <coughs> um, they backtrack. Is a better way of it. They backtrack from the reflected reflected rays. Okay, you don't do the incident rays. It's from these two coming out on the angles here. Okay, not not those two in this case. So, uh, what else do we have to say? Another way you could think of it is you have an observer over here on this side. Let's just bring this back down and around a bit. So you have an observer, as we've said down here, that this is an eyeball, uh, and you sometimes see the pupil drawn in. So this is a side view of a person's eye, and they're um, looking they see these light rays, not the scale of course, they see these spreading light rays as though they come from our image position here. So uh, that's another way to remember that those virtual light rays appear to be coming from that point. Now um, we also talk about the nature of an image. So the nature of an image is pretty important. Um, so we will write it down. The nature, there are three things. You consider the nature of anything as just properties to do with it. Um, when we're talking about the nature of an image, there are three things. Is it upright or upside down? That's inverted or upright. This one, it's upright. 
we talk about whether it is virtual or real. In this case, it's virtual because there are no real light rays coming from that point. Remember, we've got our dotted light rays um, to show where the position is. There's no real light rays, so it's virtual. As you see more of these ray diagrams, you'll become better at identifying whether it's virtual or real. This is virtual. The other thing is, we look at the magnification. And if the magnification is, um, is less than 1, it's diminished, like in this case. And if it is greater than 1, that is, if it's larger than the object, then it's magnified. Okay, you can do a magnification formula, which is the height of the image over the height of the object, or the distance of the image from that central axis there, divided by the distance of, of the object. So this is your, your D, that's your F distance, actually I've redrawn, scribble that out. That is D, DI, the distance of the image, and this is our distance of the object. Okay, and F is also a distance, and that'll link into some formulas later on. But that's it. So two rays, a parallel light ray reflecting from the focal point, <coughs> and a light ray that uses the equal angle reflection. <coughs> and you can see that it doesn't matter where the object is on the left-hand side, it's always going to produce an image that is um, upright, virtual, and diminished and inside the focal point. You can try that yourself, put a number of objects in a number of locations, and see what you get. Um, and there's the whole picture.